Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Files. Today we are going to look at the next opening for white that is against the Sicilian Savashnikov. Sicilian Savashnikov or the Pelican Sicilian which starts after the move e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6. The classical Sicilian can also start with the move to mc6, d4, cd4 and d4 and f6 and c3 and the move e5 makes it the Savashniko or the Pelican Sicilian. The idea is to immediately attack the knight on d4. Black wants to see where the knight goes and the concession which black is making with the move e5 is that the d5 square is becoming weak. <clears throat> if the white plays any passive move like mv3 then bb4 followed by d5 will hand over the initiative to black and the active move nf5 which looks good at first fails immediately to d5 because after ed we see the f5 knight is hanging and after dc qd1 black's position will become better. So white should try to take advantage of the fact that e pawn has advanced and it has kept the d pawn behind so that makes it the backward pawn and the square in front of the backward pawn usually becomes the weakness so white goes for the move knight b5 and the knight is trying to go to the d6 square here black's main move should be d6 stopping the knight from coming to d6 if black plays a6 then white has knight d6 check bishop goes to d6 queen takes d6 and we see that the queen is stopping black from castling and after the move queen e7 queen takes e7 knight takes e7 then bishop g5 which will hand over the d5 square to white so the piece will try to settle in such a square so this square d5 has become an outpost square on an open file supported by a pawn and also a strong square strong square is the square where no pawns, no enemy pawns can attack. So white can take bf6, go bishop c4 and place the knight on d5. And we see that after long castle, white will put immense pressure on the black's d7 pawn. The play will happen after the move ke7 also. After qe7, ke7, again bg5. And this time the threat of nd5 is even more powerful. So h6 allows knight d5 check and white will be in a winning position. After knight b5, black usually plays the move d6 which happens to be the main line. Now we see that the d5 square has become somewhat weak and white wants to place his piece on the d5 square. Usually white will not want a pawn on the d5 square unless there is a specific tactic, tactical idea. So bishop g5 trying to go direct and d5 or bishop and 2 f6 followed by knight d5 depending upon the situation. Here the black's main move is a6 first forcing the knight away from the dangerous b5 square from where it is eyeing the c7 and d6 squares and then cover the d5 square with the move bishop is e6 or sometimes going b5 will come to those moves. Suppose black plays bishop e6 right now then white has a very strong move knight d5. The knight immediately attacks the pinned knight. There is threat on c7. So bishop into d5. For after ed5, knight e7 forced and here white has a very strong move c3. At first it looks as if the d5 pawn is lost. But here after knight d5 or even after the move a6, white has a very strong move. So after knight ed5, there is queen a4 and we see that the black king is caught up very badly there is threat of nc7 and nd6 both and there is no defense absolutely so king might have to move to e7 which will also make the position very bad white can develop the c4 long castle and put pressure on the black's position similar play happens after the move a6 which looks as if first the knight will be driven and then he can try to take the d5 pawn but now comes queen a4 
again using similar tactics on the threat is knight d6 mate on the spot or knight c7 mate and after a b5 bishop into b5 check knight d7 force we see that bishop d7 qd7 and queen a check and white will be in a winning position let's go back to the main line after g5 the main move is a6 first driving the knight to the a3 square and now black plays the move b5 so this forces white to take a decision he has to stop the fork with the move b4 and white has to either play knight d5 right now or take bishop into f6 both the lines are possible and both are good we are going to focus on the main line that is the move nd5 keeping the pin on the f6 knight and bringing more pressure to it there are some small traps also and positional ideas are there which make the white position very solid and white can aim for slight advantage or clear advantage in most of the lines <coughs> here black has two ways either he can play b7 and get rid of the pin on the diagonal or he can put pressure on the d5 knight so after b6 bishop into f6 we don't want the pawn to come on d5 otherwise bd5 ed5 is not such a great option here that is why we first take on f6 so that after bd5 we can go qd5 there are some cases when ed5 is favorable only then white plays the move ed5 now white goes for the move c3 so one of the key aspects of this position is the black knight on c6 is unable to get to d4 but the white knight is getting full control of the d5 square so the a3 knight is rerouted from c2 to e3 and the f5 and d5 squares see here there is a backward pawn and here there is a doubled pawn so squares in front of them are being eyed by the white knights so after b7 knight c2 and now the plan is simple queen is going to h5 bishop will come to d3 and f5 move will be stopped so black can play the move f5 instantly when after e into f5 bishop f5 knight c e3 bishop e6 white controls the f5 square and the d5 square both simultaneously bishop will soon go to d3 and we will try to place a knight on the f5 square and white will also get a very strong king side attack after castle bishop goes to d3 white is trying to keep full control of the f5 square and soon he may have the bishop f5 or the knight going to f5 so after which bishop f5 in f5 and white can hope for a strong king side attack here black can try to challenge the white knight with the move any 7 when after 97 we need 7 castle and we soon see that white will be able to get his bishop to e4 followed by bishop on the d5 square then the f rook comes to d1 and white often breaks the position with the pawn break a4 getting serious advantage in the center and also on the queen side in some cases <coughs> so let's go to the main line now so after the main move bishop e7 white again goes for bishop into f6 now gf will make the e7 bishop somewhat bad and we'll see that white will have strong bind on the f5 and h5 squares after the move bishop f6 white goes c3 this idea is very common and we see it time and again black knight is deprived of the d4 square and the white knight is heading to the e3 square so here after the moves b6 knight c2 castle knight e3 white is trying to keep control of the d5 square now bishop will go to d3 and queen often reaches the f3 or the h5 squares this will give us slight advantage to white as i told you white's plan will be bd3 queen f3 or queen h5 followed by castle and then going with the move a4 let's look at the move gf6 now bishop f6 
g takes f6 here white has two ideas one he can instantly play the move queen h5 followed by bd3 or else the same plan which we have discussed till now again white goes c3 and after the move bishop e6 knight comes to e c2 like can try the move f5 immediately putting pressure on the e4 pawn and here bishop d3 and after f e we are still keeping control of the e4 square <coughs> do note that after the move bd5 here ed the knight is attacked knight moves then f5 will be taken and if black has to play the move f4 now then the queen goes to h5 and white gets a good position rook g8 can allow the move g3 uh, when the h7 pawn is somewhat weak and white's position we can say is slightly better of course this is our first part of the solvashnikov of sicilian we'll be going into more details and look at uh, more advanced things and game studies i hope you are finding these lessons useful do like share and subscribe the channel thanks for your time